welcome back to City Planner Place where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in today's episode, Karen Sterling is not satisfied with her neighborhood simply being exclusive. She wants it to be the most valuable neighborhood in the whole of Verde Beach. So she's looking across the river and thinking, boy, what is the most valuable place in Verde Beach? Because I want to beat that area. So let's take a look. Why don't we take a look at land values? So the average land value in Verde Beach, as I mentioned in the previous episode, is 59, whatever the money unit is, <laughs> per square meter. Now we've got a lot of neighborhoods that are valuable and I'm not gonna click around because I know the number. I want you to mark down or leave a comment and let me know what you think the most valuable neighborhood in Verde Beach is. And please don't cheat. <laughs> don't look at the save for episode 50. Let me know what neighborhood you think this is. And in the next episode, I will let you know if you were right or wrong. So we're gonna beat that neighborhood. And the, the land value for that neighborhood is $91 or euros or whatever your currency is per square meter. <laughs> so that is what we want to be, 91. And that, that's going to be difficult. I don't know that we're going to get there, but we're going to get darn close. And the way that you raise land value is leveling up your buildings. And you level up your buildings by ensuring that you have absolutely optimum city services and you minimize uh, uses that have externalities. And this is really, we want to detail and focus on value to make this the exclusive neighborhood that she always envisioned it to be. And just across the road, we know that the Myrtles are watching what's happening over here. And it's not necessarily that they're going to consider this. It's consider what's happening over here when they're, when they're building their neighborhood, but they're certainly keeping an eye on it because they know that as this area increases in value, the opposition to their plans is growing. So let's start out with a bit of detailing because I, I think that that would be a, a nice place to, to begin because it's, there's been a number of things that I've wanted to do that I haven't done. So one of the things that we're gonna do to start out is I wanna remove some of the trees along kind of these, these cliff sides. That's just not reasonable. Okay, so we're in a better spot there and we're gonna work on this. And before you start thinking that I've turned over a, a different, uh, you know, a new leaf. Sorry about the dead, the, the dad pun, <laughs> the bad dad pun. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm going to be adding landscaping back. So you might be thinking at this point, wow, this is the first time that he's actually decreased the flammability of the city. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. I love landscaping far too much to ever do that. We are going to take this up to the next level in just a moment. So there have been a number of comments about this river. It's too wide, it's too deep, it's too ugly. And I agree with all of them. Uh, this is something that I spent a lot of time trying to get right and uh, failing at spectacularly. So uh, unfortunately, this is the best that I could come up with because of the elevation. So I know I saw other comments saying, I wish that this meandered through here and had a bit more of a natural look. Uh, it's not natural, <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be straight. I thought about using canals for this, but that led to lots of uh, issues, I guess, uh, to, to, to put it mildly. But what we are going to do is jazz up the look of this and then fix up things around it. So what I want to do, the very first thing I want to do, it's something that I tried to do in the initial build, was add some rocks for some rapids. No one's going kayaking down this. That would be insane. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to try that, I guess... You're taking your life into your own hands. Actually, I don't know that I love it right there, but maybe we'll add some rocks at the bottom. And the bottom's probably more appropriate because you see what it was doing up top. Not good. And up here, we're okay with that. Um, I think that we're gonna probably be very modest with our use of rocks. because <laughs> It's a great way to break things if that's what you're into. See if that breaks things too much. Got to speed things up to see what the water flow is actually going to do. You know what? I, I don't, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. And I think I can live with it. 
and I think it looks better than it did before. So we're gonna go with that. What, what, what we really need to do to liven this up is landscape the heck out of it. So I do need to fix this and before I do that I want to get rid of some of these power lines that I don't need and we've got a dip in this bridge that is pretty unreasonable so we're going to get rid of that as well. Just make sure we're still connected. We are not. So we can fix this with assets. So what I think I'm going to do is add a gazebo and hopefully that'll make a connection. We're going to focus on the park in a bit but for the time being, I just want that power connection made. Good, good. So we're good there. We're going to fix this bridge. <laughs> wow, that is really terrible. We're going to fix this bridge, and then we've got a little bit more work to do with bridges. Yeah, and that still looks pretty terrible. So <laughs> I think that what we're going to do is I, I was using... I don't think I was using this bridge for inspiration in terms of the height. I think I should have been. And distance. It should mirror this. As best I can anyway. Oh, that's so much better. Alright, so now we're going to make our connection. Oh. And I can't stand when it gets... When you get that extra crossing note in there. It drives me crazy. Oh, uh, never mind. That's going to happen anyway. So I should just calm down. But this one is extra, <laughs> so I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna get this as good as I can get it, which will be bad. So we're just yeah I will either learn to love this or just try to ignore it. Oh I can't. That's so bad. It's so bad. So I am well aware that this is where people will come out of the woodwork saying. If only I were using the curved tool, maybe you're right. Yep, <laughs> you're right. That was so much easier. I need to use the freeform tool only where it's appropriate, and I, I like to use it everywhere. So anyway, now we can finish off a little bit of landscaping before we do some other things that I think you're going to like. Let's get this moving again, though. So I may overuse this asset, but I really like the way it hides the lumpies and the bumpies and makes things look just a little bit, a little bit, I don't know, more natural. I don't love how it overlaps roads from time to time, but I can, I can overlook a little bit of that if we're getting a better product in general, which I think that we are. And if you want to diversify this a bit, you can always go through and add in some other green assets and plop them through. But but truthfully, I think that the, the basic asset does a good job of creating a really lush appearance. So I like it, I like it a lot. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is upgrade some of our bridges. So we've got all of these great content creator pack br bridges and I've, I've used none of them. So we are gonna need to, to think about what we're using, like obviously, this truss bridge, probably not great, but there are some of these bridges that I think would really be special. So this European stone bridge, I could see Karen saying, you know what? We are a special community. We are getting this stone truss bridge. Question is, can I make this asset one way? Because I believe that this is a two-lane road. Yeah, I, I, I do not believe that I can. The only way that I could fudge it would be to use a highway. <laughs> Which, I don't think we want that. You know, I think that uh, we're going to have to keep this as a secret. Between anyone watching this channel and me. Because it looks so nice. That is, oh. <laughs> Except for that. That is the exact type of atmosphere that I'm going for, even if the bridge isn't doing what I want from a lane standpoint. This might be where we play the game a little bit, and we accept that sometimes you're going to get some weird things going on here. If it becomes a traffic problem, I'll fix it, but man, this is such a beautiful asset. And look at this. It's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. 
So we're gonna we're gonna do that. And we're gonna upgrade this one as well. So this one we don't have to. Um, we don't have to fudge. In fact, I really like this. Again, we'll go with the European. Look at that. That is just a classy bridge, and it's like it's pointing into the neighborhood with the masonry and the stonework. Love that. Beautiful. So with that, I think we're in a good spot here. We could certainly liven this up with a bit more landscaping. We just might do that. Oh yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling really good about this river now. I don't know if you are, maybe you're not, but uh, this works for me. <laughs> so <laughs> the the only thing that's maybe maybe not working for me is um, the the ped bridges. We could certainly use some content creator pack pet bridges as well let's let me first try to remember where they are here we've got this european pet bridge and then we have this american one yeah we're gonna go with the european one again it's a nicer looking asset i guess europeans like wide trails is that is that true if so confirm in the comments <laughs> I, I i do find it a little bit curious that the, the bridges are different width Maybe it's... I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is. So the one thing I don't love is that now we have a different width here at the path. I think I'm going to have to be okay with that. And the way that we're going to become okay with it is landscaping. So this brings up something interesting. In a new neighborhood like this, I would fully expect that the postal service would require uh, an ex uh, it, 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 what they're called is uh, CBUs, cluster mailbox units. And that's, at least in, in America, the Postal Service is, is, I guess, to save labor. Um, they're, they're having these cluster mailbox units in new neighborhoods where, you know, uh, a number of residents, 25, 50, all drive to this unit or walk to this unit and from there they pick up their mail so it, it's a lot easier for the postal service then because they're only going to homes for large parcels but besides that they can drop everything off at one of these cluster mailboxes so big time savings for them from a labor standpoint they're just driving up to these units and calling them a day but what you see a lot is that these units are placed along trails uh, because he, he, nobody wants them placed in the public right-of-way, at least no community that I've seen. And the reason for that is then the city's on the hook for replacing it. But if you place it on private property, you'd have to have a uh, an HOA, a homeowners association, or um, a private entity responsible for maintaining that unit and repairing it and replacing it someday. So I would expect to see one of those right here. Uh, and maybe on the other side as well. And everyone from this area would get their mail at the cluster mailbox. Now, I'm not saying that I love them. I'm just saying that they exist. <laughs> so for me, uh, you know, I have a, I have a, a mailbox in, in front of my house and I like it. I think it's, I think it's nice. Um, it's, it's one of those old man rituals that, that I, I personally partake in, checking the mail. I like it. it it just it centers me <laughs> and in the last year and a half i think it's been nice to, to have a, a reason to step out of my house sometimes so, so i'm just going through here and i'm okay with some harsh uh cliffs what i'm not okay with is homes just kind of dropping down into the road you'd, you'd expect that there would be some sort of relief and some flat backyards. So I just want to go around the outside and flatten these. I think I might actually redo that road. So we're going to call a mulligan there. And the reason why is I'm concerned that it's dipping down to the road. That doesn't seem very uh, reasonable to me. So we're just going to pull this up so that it kind of mirrors what we've been doing. And we'll get that cul-de-sac in a cul-de-sac back because everyone loves cul-de-sacs in a cul-de-sac and our water pipes are more or less under the road where they belong so we are in a good place there we're gonna leave that let's come back and we will finish out our 
kind of the, the main gate to the community, making sure that it makes sense. So I would, have, I would assume that this grading occurred at, at the time of development. It's one thing that I think the game doesn't necessarily do a great job of handling. Understandably so. I think it's easier this way. But why not go back through at the end? Just make sure that our trails are level, that our homes have yards. This is a single family neighborhood after all, and it's supposed to be an exclusive neighborhood. I think the difference between this and, you know, potentially a, uh, a neighborhood with a, a lower price point might be the size of the yards. I think that's, that's really where you're seeing those sorts of, you know, price point decisions occurring. Because you're seeing pretty large homes being built everywhere right now. I think that in the, in the U.S., the average home size is close to you know, 2,000 square feet. You compare that to, you know, 50 years ago, and it's like double. Uh, but uh, uh, the, it's coming at a cost, and that cost is the size of the yard. So right now, yards are just not very big. <laughs> so you might see a uh, 4,000 square foot lot, you know, uh, it, with a with a 1,700 square foot house on it, which, you know, when you think about it, that's even if it's a two-story house, that's, that's not a lot of lot. Not a lot of lot. <laughs> it's, yeah, so you, you get you get the picture, and that's not what I would expect to see here. Although you do see it in some places. Maybe Karen was at least a little bit conscientious about price point, and if she's not gonna reduce the size of the homes, um, you know that's one way to get there. I think it's kind of a shame that we're not seeing more diversity in home sizes, because that's something that they used to when they were building homes, you know, post World War II. That was something that uh, was really factored into the home when it was being built. What could the homeowner do down the line themselves? So you would see these plans for a Cape Cod and the homeowner would say, I don't want you to finish the second story. Uh, finish one bath, one bedroom. I've got a kid on the way and I'll get the other ones myself later. And there would be addition kits and things of that nature. And uh, a homeowner could go through and, and make those changes later on down the line as as they could afford to do so. And that's how you got some diversity in the housing stock. And you don't really see that. In fact, what you see, or nowadays, what you see is the exact opposite. You see a, a neighborhood coming in and it's got protective covenants. You can't change the color of the house. You can't uh, change the way it looks at all without going through an architectural control committee. It's just a different, uh, a different world. And some of it I understand. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a great protection for the builder when they're building the neighborhood to have some sort of consistency that they could market and sell. And for homeowners, it is a way of ensuring that your neighbor isn't going to paint a Green Bay Packers logo on their garage, which is a common feature in various small towns and even big cities across Wisconsin. <laughs> so maybe you don't want that, you know, and that's a choice to, to not have that in your neighborhood. <laughs> it's, you know, protective covenants that say you're not allowed to do that. That's one way to accomplish that. That said, it is, like I said, kind of problematic. You can't really get a different architectural flavor over time if you're restricted from, from actually changing your home. And at this point, I think I'm getting into uh, over, over perfectionist sort of thing on that side. So I'll stop there and I will finish this little area right here. And then we're going to do the nuts and bolts of what we need to do to actually get this place leveled up. So I'm stealing just a little bit of soil here. So hopefully I can use it back in this area because I am out of soil, which is making Myrtle very happy. The Myrtles are loving it because they've got soil to sell. <laughs> Wheelers and dealers getting their money. Okay, so I think we can leave it here. This, to me, when we, when we cruise along here, it's looking a lot more reasonable. So we could certainly use some landscaping. We will get to that. We've got time to landscape. What we need to do now is make sure that we have adequate school coverage and that we can we can do everything here so 
we're going to go through. You can see that there are a lot of areas that do not have good elementary school coverage. This is painful. So we have to have more elementary schools to serve this area because the roadway network stinks. So they're going to benefit from this. I mean, they're going to pay for it too. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you, you don't get nothing in this world is free. So um, they'll get their better schools. Uh, we're going to punish them by using eminent domain for those schools. <laughs> Reasonably, that's not what would happen. Um, school districts are thinking 20, 30 years ahead. And they are placing, or they are purchasing land in many cases and letting it sit vacant. So you might have seen some of these sorts of areas in your city. Uh, areas where you look and you think, boy, it's... It's awful peculiar, peculiar that in this area that is completely developed, there's a, a you know a five-acre lot. Look at the tax parcel records there. You might find out that it's actually a future school district site or a place for a library. And while the funding was available to actually build the school or, or to, to purchase the lot, the, the, the money wasn't there to actually build the school. Or it wasn't warranted yet, so why build it? The land, though, that's incredibly valuable. You got to do that. You got to you got to get that while you can. Well, it's a green field if you anticipate development. OK, so we've added our schools, but our schools do not have playgrounds. So let's add some small playgrounds near our schools. And we are going crazy with eminent domain today. You know what? That's OK. When you uh, when you play this game, sometimes you've got to take some liberties. We are playing a game after all, and uh, it's nice to be able to deviate and do some things that, in reality, I just am never going to be able to do in a million years. Look at that. Fancy community school. And our coverage is now good. So I believe it's good anyway. Let's. We should actually check these things out. If we want this to be valuable, we must know. And the answer is no, it's not good. We need one more at a minimum, and I'm thinking right here, near where we placed all of our city services before, probably the ideal area. So we're killing two birds with one stone by adding these playgrounds, which is one reason why I'm continuing to do it. Okay, so our land value here now, you can see the average land value of the city has increased. It was uh, 60 before, or 59 before, now it's 60. So we are now, so we are now at 61. That's not good enough. That is not good enough at all. We need to keep pumping it up. So let's look at our high schools. We're gonna add some more. So you see me kind of feeling around to find a place to place these. And that's one of the problems that you have when you go through and you make all of these curvy roads is the game just hates it. <laughs> it's just, it doesn't allow you to place anything anywhere. And it's, it's a real struggle to get these buildings placed. So I'm gonna also go through, so I added a basketball court, we're gonna add a community pool to each one of these, which will help with healthcare as well as improve our land values. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. We've got some lumpies and bumpies here and we, I'm not sure how much we're gonna remedy all of those things. We're gonna do our best but some of them are just going to be a bit of a challenge. So I'm just curious where we're at with our levels. And it looks like I see a lot of level four buildings. We're certainly getting better. There's some fives in there. And our coverage is fairly good. So this has been a problem. I probably should have made a roadway connection here. I might actually call a brief mulligan to do that one thing. Because I don't think it was totally reasonable to approve a plat that has this kind of madness with this just terminating in a big cul-de-sac. So it's still a almost a cul-de-sac, <laughs> but, but at least we have one connection through here. And that'll improve our school connections as well. It extends it down a bit. It's not perfect, but it's better. We're not gonna we're not gonna worry about perfect. So university coverage is just bad. And 
you know, we could certainly do some things to extend, you know, Fuego Hills, you know, Pyrotechnic into here, but they're not ever going to allow that. In fact, what they're going to do is look to have a modern Institute of Technology over by the Sterling office district. And they don't want that in their neighborhood. They kind of want it on the outside. So what we're going to do is have that off of frontage road as, as sad as that is. <laughs> so I am curious. I don't know that I have a ton of room for this. So we're going to place this little road right here first. And then let's see. Yeah, we can't. Ooh, ooh. It's tight, but we can do it. We're going to. And that is ugly. That is terrible. But we have uh, we have different priorities that are conflicting. Yeah, and that road is going to just be ugly. I don't know that there's much I can do to make a clean connection through here because I won't be able to fit the school in <laughs> if I do. Unless, of course... I move the school up here. Oh, yeah, that might be the best approach. So we'll leave the school on a bit of a cul-de-sac. And I realize I've disconnected the power at this point. So we've got that. And I think that what we're going to do, actually, it would have been fine. We don't need this power here. And I don't want it because I want to, I want to improve the aesthetics here a little bit. I know it's, I know that this is not the greatest uh, building in the world and maybe we would have liked to see an extension of the good old Institute, but they're not going to accept this location. This is This is not a very good location. Uh, it's good for access, but it's 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 kind of a menacing location in my mind You know, you're in class and you hear the freeway buzzing by you so Sure it you could do it But I, I don't think anyone would like this But we'll give it some of the trappings of a college a university path and maybe even use some university amenities so i don't think it's actually going to let me place any of this stuff without it being inside of a college yeah it's not in a campus area hmm so i could certainly go ahead steal this bring it over take it away but you know why why bother what we can do that will work just as well is make this you know add some park amenities through here can't do it to myself I I this would look really great with a bunch of uh, with a with a whole bunch of you know uh, pavers and, and different things of that nature I know that I'm gonna really struggle to get those straight so we're just going to landscape it instead it'll be a place where you could throw a frisbee doesn't need to be elaborate this is after all not a formal campus at least uh, using the DLC so We'll make this a pleasant place to go for a walk. No one's going to use it anyway <laughs> because of where it is, which is unfortunate. Who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will be well utilized. Okay, so now we'll go back in. We'll add a couple of food trucks. Maybe you could grab a bite to eat. And then we will add a couple of seating areas through here. All right, and then we'll leave this open green place where you could sit down and enjoy the sun. Something, something uh, a little bit different. So we've got a lot of students here. So that is a good thing. That's going to help this entire area. I do think we need a little bit more landscaping along the side. So why don't we take care of that as well? And then last but not least, let's make sure that we at least have some sound walls along here. You know, after all, you know, when people are in class, you, would, you wouldn't want them to hear this road noise any more than they have to. I don't know if that was wrong before, but it was certainly... <laughs> we've got it fixed. All right. I think we're in a good spot there. Not the best campus, but it's okay. And truly, I don't think that Karen really cares about the campus all that much. Uh, in fact, you, you kind of see that the, there's a major issue with this already. That is, how do you get here? Um... You don't really have access to transit. What I think we're going to do, we've got to make some sort of pedestrian connection through here. I think we could probably sneak a path through here. 
So that's what we're going to do. Now I'll use the exact same path as a demonstration that this is a university facility and they have an easement for this connection. Look at that, that curved road tool is coming in clutch. I really need to use that more. So I believe that this connection is live. Hard to demonstrate it without someone using it though. So why don't we just speed things along and I think I'll do some landscaping here. And uh, that'll be a way that we can monitor and I see someone walking on it. But we're still gonna do the landscaping, so I like it. And sometimes I like to have this, this thick landscaping along the highway. Because I would imagine that this would feel a bit more like, let's say this was an old uh, 40 acre parcel that was, uh, what, what, what it was developed, was developed by the DOT uh, for the creation of an interchange. So they purchased the entire parcel and left part of it uh, as, you know, the remnant forest. So you'll see these from time to time and that's what I imagine this being, a remnant forest. So you might even see a very clear line of where the old forested area was. And this line right here would be the forest, or the, the parcel line. And you'd see the road end just before it. And this is one of the reasons why you could end up, uh, from time to time, seeing a an area where you got two roads. Now, I'm not gonna keep this here, but I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about. You'll see that there are two roads, like a row of trees in between. That's lack of coordination and old parcel lines coming to haunt. Many times, you'll see that sort of scenario uh, where one portion of the community is incorporated and the other part is not. So that that's my idea there. We'll stick to that. All right, so I think we're in a good spot here. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I think it's looking much better. So let's look at our land values again. We're improving. We're improving. We're up to 60... Of course, you got to go down. <laughs> 65. One of the things that we could do to improve this is look at Silver Lake Park. And let's get this leveled up. So the very first thing I want to do, Karen's not charging her residents to use this park. What she is going to do is she's going to advertise it to everyone here, make it even more fun. Maybe we'll celebrate. No. <laughs> no, that, and that's, that's only for amusement parks. So let's see. Night tours. We'll recycle uh, for nature reserve buildings. Yeah, there's not, we could have our advertisement campaign, but she doesn't really want, uh, she, well, we're gonna do that for the businesses, for the sake of the businesses. So we have this kind of meandering path through here. I think we might just keep it and focus on adding amenities around it. And I'm not gonna stay just within this, uh, the city park amenities we might we might deviate from that a bit and what we can do what we do have the luxury of doing because of the because of what we're using is add a couple of these these park piers in and we're absolutely going to do that and by a couple i meant all of <laughs> we're gonna we're going to do it up we're gonna have so many of these and for each of these amenities that I'm adding, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at our sight lines to make sure that we can actually see something. You imagine that they would clear, they'd make a clearing when, they're, when they were planning the park. And now we're gonna go ahead here and make some connections. We just need to make sure that all of these piers are connected I think the only thing that really matters is angle for this. And even that probably doesn't matter a ton. I'm just making little stubs. And they don't need to be perfect. I just need to worry about the connection actually being made. And then we're gonna wanna take a look at things like this where maybe we have some foliage covering up our paths because that's not desirable. Oh, and you see, there I go letting perfect be the enemy of good. And I'm paying for it. 
paying for it with that. Oh, that is the, that is the harshest payment they could give me. <laughs> make me look at that. Okay, and I think we're I think we're in a pretty good place here. I, if I had move it, I would do a few more things, but we don't have move it, so we're gonna deal with a little bit of weirdness. I'm just gonna go through and take a look at these. I'm okay with the overgrown stuff. I'm not okay with a tree obstructing the views of these of these pavilions. That's not gonna work. Come back around that. This one's got lots of obstructed views. Much better. Here too, and I think that's the last one. And this, we could get rid of those. That is that is a lot better. And we don't only want palm oh, death. Death! We're gonna take a slight deviation from what we were doing, because I think we have one death care facility. Ah. Gotta have more. So again, in our in our search for or our, our quest to have adequate coverage of things we're gonna inappropriately place some of this stuff uh, well no no we're gonna place it on the side street but we're gonna have to have a lot of them and this of course is a collector couplet that i broke by putting a bridge there so all the better <laughs> just just wonderful and i'm curious i was moving quickly on this our visitors are holding us back now i think because our entertainment is through the roof which is exactly what I was hoping. But what I want to do to really take this to the next level, we're going to add some signature trees near some some key amenities, like near the entry points. And then we'll add a thicker ring along the outside so that you get a, a bit of nature while you're in here. And I don't think I'm going to... I'm not going to put them everywhere, necessarily. I'm going to diversify this a bit. But I do want to start thinking about building that barrier between this park and the outside world. Especially since that's a collector. And it's not a tree line collector, it's just a collector. We actually haven't upgraded any of the roads at all. So, things to be aware of. And now that we've broken this, this collector, I might just make this... A local road maybe that'll be the way that i deal with what i've done with this bridge here because there's not a vanilla way for me to fix that and i've noticed a couple of limitations on the on the most recent content creator pack you know i can't really complain but you know if i were to say anything it's it's that you know not having one ways you know things like that it, it can be kind of kind of tough it can break break your idea a bit but that's okay. I'm just happy to have them because they are some of the most beautiful assets in the game. You know, and I'd imagine you might actually see some of those palm trees internal to here cleared out a bit and placed in a very orderly way. And maybe you get a line of them around here. We'll let some of them survive around the water pump. Okay, so I'm trying to keep in mind that sometimes, particularly with landscaping, less is more. Uh, wouldn't you believe it? In my backyard, when I went to, you know, moved into my house, I landscaped. <laughs> and my wife told me, listen, you are crowding things. It's way too close. And I, 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 I planted things inappropriately. <laughs> And this is why I'm not a landscape architect. I, I respect them, but uh, I, I like dense landscaping. I like it to feel good, even when it's baby landscaping. Now, thankfully, in the game, I'm never planting, you know, little tiny plants, you know, saplings and things of that nature, which is what I was doing in my yard. And what I'm often, you know, when you look at a plan set, that's what you'll see is, you know, we'll plant this. Here's here's what it's going to look like. Then you walk out to the site and you're like, wait, <laughs> it's it's a foot tall. And this is going to take 20 years to mature and it might die and you still have sold the project. <laughs> so it's one of those one of those things to think about. 
And you can buy landscaping that is bigger. It's just considerably more expensive and rightfully so. It's gonna survive more than likely. And uh, as a result of the size, it's been at the greenhouse for a number of years. Okay, less is more and we have a less. And I think that it's much nicer. This is the kind of place that I would like to walk through. We could certainly improve things, but I think we're in a good place, so I don't know that we're going to. Uh, why don't we take a look at just a couple of more measures of our city's, or our, our neighborhood's effectiveness and make sure that we're in a good place with that. And we're not. You can see that we, we could use some clinics through here to spread out our coverage. So I think we're gonna do just that. Add more clinics. We're gonna add them in central locations where they would serve a significant portion of the community. And you can't have high land values if everyone's sick and dying. So <laughs> I think it's important to get, get the healthcare right. So fire coverage, again, this is another one, especially as we're adding all this landscaping that we need to make sure that we're nailing. So this is a good road because it really, you can get a long ways, oh, well, you, can get a, you can get around the neighborhood. So I don't want to put this on the outside where you'd have the views. We'll put it on the inside. Truthfully, the place where this would probably end up wouldn't be the best place. It would probably end up on that collector, which is terrible for it. You'd have to do a whole bunch of work in the in the media and in the, in the in the in the right of way to try to make it work. Um, you know, reconfiguring the medians, things of that nature, and we can't do that, so we're not gonna do that. Here, I think it would go right along the rail because it's the type of use that's blocking from this noise. So why wouldn't you? So here again, this is kind of a minor arterial or collector, local collector. We're gonna put that right there, serve the rest of this neighborhood. You see that our coverage is pretty darn good now. Pretty darn good. Now where it's not so good is over in this neighborhood. And that's probably because we need a firehouse, we a, a, a proper, fire station and we've only placed a firehouse there. I might call a mulligan on this. Move this over to exactly where I tell you never to put them. No, no we're not. We can't do that. We'll put it over here. I can't break my own rules. Not that <laughs> not that quickly. It's gonna it's bound to happen. This whole neighborhood is breaking all of my rules, but um we're we're doing what we can with it. So hopefully this gets us, we're pretty, pretty close. We could probably use one more firehouse over here. And this is really kind of a nod to the scale of this neighborhood. It is massive. I mean, when you look at this, you compare it to the size of Verde Beach. It's like the size of all of Old Town with a population of 16,000. So it's, it's big. It's very big. So we're going to treat it like it's big and, you know, give it services. All right. So we've got that. And uh, let's uh, let's take a look again. We might, we haven't really worked in any of our unique buildings, but we might want to take a look and see if there are any unique buildings that would fit the bill here at all. And boy, this is, yeah. Oh, we could certainly put this in the park. Boy, that would take this up to the next level. That would do it. Problem is we gotta put it along the road. So if we do that, we're talking about a pretty significant modification of our park. Unless of course, yeah, no, we, we I guess we could put it on the other side of our park. And now we're in, no, we can't because that's the Myrtle's land. No, that would have been a great idea, but we can't do that. It's not gonna work. So let's see if there are any smaller neighborhood parks, pyramid of safety. So the lungs of the city might, I don't know that we're gonna be able to fit anything like this in here because of the way that the neighborhood's been designed without totally reconstructing the neighborhood network, roadway network, we're not doing that. Uh, the official park, I mean, it's, it's pretty sterile. We might be able to work that in near all of this yeah, I think we're going to. We're gonna add this over here, kind of near all of our public service amenities. 
really boost the values in that area. And then we have all of these little plazas and parks. And I could... <laughs> the statue of shopping would be funny. It can poor health be... Yeah, no. That's not going to work. Statue of industry. I, I, the statue of wealth. Truthfully, I wish... I don't know where that is. I might go replace it. Because that's, that's really what would fit over here. See if I could find the statue of wealth quickly. Ah, uh, we can't move that. That's the 50 cent memorial statue. Okay, well, we're, we're going to leave that. They don't get the statue of wealth because that's a 50 statue. And that makes a lot of sense. So we're going to just go ahead and give them another one. But yeah, we'll give them the statue of shopping. I think that that is <laughs> as good as any. And we'll put that right at the front gate to this neighborhood. Go shopping. So there is a rational purpose for this. And that is, I want to bring the land values down here. We're suffering a bit down here in terms of getting the land values up. So hopefully this makes up for it a bit. I don't think it's perfect. And again, we're really bumpy in and, and lumpy in out at this point. Um, we're, we'll, we'll have to do a little bit more a little bit later. And I think we might also put the la the, the this uh, Lazaret Plaza or the Plaza of the Dead rather in here, and maybe this will be something that the city is you know is being installed. It's kind of a city amenity. Fortunately, it's just not going to let me do what I want to do because of the curve in this road, and I think that's a bit uglier than I'm okay with. Maybe I can steal just a bit of soil here, pull this up, and. Okay, I'll, I'll be okay with that. I do think that we're going to landscape around this one a bit. And eliminate that home. So, we are deviating from a reasonable reality. And I'm having a blast. <laughs> uh, we, you know, Karen is, is turning on unlimited money mode, basically. And doing whatever she wants and telling people that they have to vacate their premises and uh, I would imagine that she is you know on the village board maybe the village president and the rules it's it's kind of an old boys and girls club in this case and she's doing whatever she needs to do to to make the community have the vision that that, that really she has seen for it to, to make it fulfill that vision yeah, I like that. That's that's good, and that's going to help with our land values, which are still... We're at 70 now, so we're getting there. We're getting there, but we could do better. What else do we have here? We do have a driving range, and I do think... So I've heard a lot of people talk about how they wish that there was a golf course in here. Uh, maybe not a golf course, but a driving range would sure fit in nicely here. Unfortunately, I don't know where this where this actually works. There might have been a place and I might have used it up. <laughs> so where this would probably end up going again would probably be a fairly undesirable area. Maybe even actually. So if the roads were gonna were gonna cooperate with me, off a main drag within here it would make a ton of sense. Unfortunately, I don't think the roads are ever gonna cooperate with me having this sort of grade in this area. Coupled with the crazy roadway network that we've developed through here. Can we get it? Can we get it? I think we we can get it. We're going to use lots of eminent domain to make it happen. And dezone this entire block. Because we've got some work to do if we want this to look okay. So my guess is these neighbors would be furious because I have a sneaking suspicion that if we were to turn this tonight, yeah, they've got some light. <laughs> Thankfully, it looks like they're shielded and pointing down for the most part, so maybe it's not terrible. It's certainly not as nice as not having that as your neighbor. That said, the benefits of having this driving range next to your house probably are good enough for this city. Interestingly, it looks like that lowers the value in this area. That was not what I was expecting. Even at that, we're still almost maxed out 
all the way around here. And we're at about 70 now. So we've got we've got some more work to do. I think we're gonna add in some police stations and then we might continue this in the next episode. Uh, Cause I think we're getting a little bit longer at this and I, we've got a lot of work to do still here. So um, let's add in some police stations. We'll make sure that these are close to our fire stations and we have a, a, a proper department. So, but we don't here. So let's, again, we'll relocate this more eminent domain and then we will take this and give it a proper police department and then fix our zoning then again we'll go through here and we just need to make a couple of additions and I'd love to keep these uses grouped together I would imagine that the city purchases or the community the village purchases this land and divides it between these two uses and there's a lot of logic there. I think that makes sense. Group them close to one another. You can have shared parking facilities, things of that nature. Now there, there wasn't another facility, but that's okay too. Same thing there, right next to the one we placed before. And I think we're in a good spot with that. We could certainly use these sorts of amenities out here because we don't have them. So we'll add police and fire coverage out here. Boy, are we seeing some traffic. We're backing up as people continue to move in here and things continue to happen. We're gonna need to keep an eye on this because I don't love what's going on. And I can't be 100% sure as to why this is happening. I can only speculate at this point. My speculation is that we are seeing a lot of trips utilizing this. And the problem is the, the design of this neighborhood means that you have lots of roads functioning as arterials that maybe aren't actually arterials. So you can see that you got these local streets with backup, significant backup. It's probably taking your whole transportation network down with it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this neighborhood. Oh, it's terrible. We're going to, we're going to need to do more because it's, it is certainly, it's ruining everything, <laughs> which was not the game plan here, but that's certainly what's happening. Uh, but I, I think we're gonna leave it here. We are making some inroads. We see that we're up to 72. We're gonna get to past 91. Let me know in the comments, what is the most valuable neighborhood in the city? And I will see you in the next one. If you like this, hit the like button. If you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.